How's it going everybody? Welcome your faces back to the Satoshi Club where today I'm going to explain the effects of monetary fiscal policies and what the Fed is currently doing to influence the market. Now this is stuff that's going to last you know years from now because fiscal policy was you know invented hundreds of years ago by uh, economists in the field and you'll see one of the British economists that actually uh, invented so to speak fiscal policy was John Maynard Keynes one of the people who has uh, significantly developed the field of economics in general but uh, why is this important for you to know well everyone should know this stuff because when the government you know increases interest rates or decreases interest rates it is something that affects the market it's something that affects cryptocurrencies and it's something that if you knew how it would affect this stuff you would have a potential advantage or uh, you know so to speak uh, on the market so if you want to have an edge on the market this is stuff that you need to know because fundamentals are one of the most important parts of trading investing or whatever you want to do with your funds now first and foremost what i wanted to talk about is the monetary policies right monetary policy is a set of tools used by the nation's central bank or the fed in the case of the us that basically controls the overall money supply to the economy to achieve economic growth or reduce you know economic downturn right uh it revises interest rates or it changes bank reserve requirements and there's a few tools that i will discuss in a second or two but monetary policy can be either expansionary or contractionary in the expansionary case it is basically uh, fueling economic growth and in the contractionary case it is basically lowering down levels of inflation so the federal reserve commonly uses three strategies for this which are reserve requirements the discount rate or interest rates and open market operations let's see what these three are actually comprised of but before we do let's see what actually makes these policies tick right in the sense of data and statistics because monetary policy isn't something that the economy is just going to go ahead and start doing it's something that needs to be influenced by facts statistics and overall performance in the market in the economy unemployment interest rates and gross domestic product so some of the key factors that influence policies out there are first of all gross domestic product or gdp per capita you know let's say or the rate of inflation right which could be either too high or too low or at the optimal level where you know monetary policy wouldn't be used at all or you know sector specific and industry specific growth rates that also tend to influence the monetary policy strategy so the central bank may revise interest rates you know it charges to banks around the world and essentially how these contractionary and expansionary types of monetary policies work it's pretty simple, right? If the economy is performing well, but too well, so to speak, and inflation is happening, right? The economy or the central bank is going to start influencing it by introducing the contractionary or deflationary monetary policy. What does this do? Well, essentially, it increases rates, right? So people would be more inclined to put their money in the bank and take advantage of these higher rates rather than spend the money themselves. Why? Well, because these higher rates will bring them a higher return over time. Same goes for foreign investment into the country. Same goes for businesses who are trying to, you know, uh, instead of uh, spend their money, right? They would rather save their money and uh, earn an interest on them. So using this approach, you know, people and businesses, instead of spending money, they are saving money and less money is being circulated around the economy, which will in turn help the money supply decrease, which will in turn reduce inflation. But in the other case of expansionary monetary policy, for example, when we're in periods of economic downturn, the economy could lower interest rates, right? To, uh, you know, make loans more affordable, right? So I would rather go to a bank and get a loan if the interest rate is 1% rather than if it's 4%, right? So businesses and people are going to be more inclined to go to the bank and take a loan out so they would spend money or invest in a business, which would in turn increase money supply in the economy and increase economic activity, causing a spiral towards the upside, which could cause an expansionary monetary policy spiral which is not a good thing but you know it's also a big scale in the economic machine so it is something that you know the uh, officials have to be taking care of so contractionary monetary policy if they want to lower inflation which is what the fed is doing right now and expansionary monetary policy if you want to increase levels of economic activity and increase economic growth now some of the goals of monetary policy itself are, first of all, you know, reducing or increasing the level of money supply 
circulating in the economy, right? If you have too much money in the economy, inflation is going to be high and you're going to have to, you know, contract that number. So contractionary monetary policy will be useful. And, you know, in the other case, it is the opposite. So also you have unemployment. So if, uh, you know, unemployment has to be decreased, right? Uh, basically, it's decreased as a result of higher money supply and more attractive interest rates, stimulating business activities and reopening positions on the job market. So if you have an expansionary monetary policy, money will be flowing everywhere. People and businesses take loans from the banks to pay new employees to expand to scale, which will in turn decrease unemployment. And lastly, exchange rates. If a country, for example, wants to have a more affordable produce, they're, they're going to be exporting to another country. They're going to influence it with an increase in money supply because then the domestic currency will become cheaper than the foreign exchange and domestic goods being sold in the foreign country will in turn be cheaper than the goods sold in the foreign country itself. And, uh, you know, more exports could happen. Now, this all depends on the price elasticity of exports and all of this stuff as well. But let's not get into too much detail. If a country wants to export more, it is uh, logical that they're going to have to lower the price of its exports to be able to export more to the other country. And expansionary monetary policy actually helps with that. So some of the tools, lastly, about monetary policy are first and foremost, open market operations, where the Fed uh, you know, or the Federal Reserve Bank buys bonds from investors or sells additional bonds to investors to change the number of outstanding government securities and money available to the economy as a whole. So these are open market operations and essentially they're used to manipulate these short term interest rates that affect other interest rates in the economy. So what they do is they buy bonds, you know, lower the money supply through that, lower the interest rates, and then these interest rates will influence other interest rates in the economy on a more massive scale and cause a, you know, shift in uh, consumption, shift in, uh, you know, investments, shift in all of these economic indicators, right? Now, second of all, you've got interest rates, right? They can simply outright change the interest rates or the required collateral that it demands. And by doing this, you're stimulating people to either buy more or to save more, which will either, you know, increase economic activity or decrease economic activity, depending on the goal. And lastly, you have reserve requirements where lowering reserve requirements for banks, for example, will release more capital for these banks to offer loans or buy other assets, which is also kind of expansionary in this case. Now, we do have a case of fiscal policy as well. I won't go into too much detail about it because my goal here is to discuss the Fed and its actions right now through the monetary policy that it is implying. But let's just do some key takeaways on fiscal policy. So first and foremost, it implies to the use of government spending and tax policies to influence economic conditions, right? It is largely based on ideas from British economies. Uh, economist John Maynard Keynes, who, you know, is a very big deal in the econom economics world. And you should probably give him a Google if you don't know who he is. Um, he argued that governments could stabilize their business cycle and regulate economic output rather than letting the market do the, uh, you know, thing alone, right? Which makes perfect sense. And that is why we have expansionary and contractionary fiscal policies where an expansionary policy lowers tax rates or increases spending to increase this aggregate demand and fuel economic growth, right? In the expansionary case. And in the contractionary case, it raises rates or cuts spending to prevent or reduce inflation. And by rates, I mean tax rates. So fiscal policy, tax rates, government spending, everything to do with the government, monetary policy, interest rates, reserve requirements, uh, open market operations. This is stuff that the central bank is uh, you know, responsible for. So with that being said, let's see what the Fed is doing right now. And let's take a little glimpse at the market. As you may have noted, noticed recently, uh, the Fed actually said that they are going to probably have smaller increases in interest rates right now. And that will soon be appropriate because the threat of recession is growing. So the country is entering a, and by country, I mean the entire world, a period of slower economic growth because inflation, when it's being fought, okay, inflation is falling down, but we have other problems, which are these recessionary periods where, you know, unemployment could increase, right? Which is a very bad thing and a few other things could happen that I'm not going to get into too much detail in right now but we are clear that the Fed is not finished quite yet with rate hikes but they may you know create a break in them just to see how the market reacts and 
Currently, we can see that they did raise the rates to a top range of 4% from near zero last spring. So they are very much incentivizing saving of money and not spending of money, which is obviously, you know, influencing a lot of businesses out there and creating a threat of recession. But, you know, this pause in rate hikes may be warranted by early next year. So let's see how they affect the economy if they do come up. Now, looking at the chart of the US 500, this is something that is very difficult to understand sometimes because you have the classic influence on the market that increasing interest rates should have, right? If interest rates are increased, it means that inflation should drop down. It means that spending should drop down. It means that people will save more money. It means that a lot of money will flow out of stocks. So by intuition, an increase in interest rates means dropping down of the market, right? which is what we can see from the US 500. We can see the same thing from Bitcoin, right? Ever since they, uh, you know, actually said that they're going to start increasing interest rates, the market has been going down. But what's happening right now? We are nearing the end of this first term of increased rates and the market may be finding a situation where it could potentially, you know, start moving back up for a few months because the rates are now going to be uh, slowly controlled or kept even or even lowered at some point and the market you know or people like me and you or institutions when they hear this news going on they're thinking okay this is bullish right so that's why what we can see at the us 500 right now is a bullish move you know in the past few uh, weeks saying that you know okay maybe we're gonna see a lowering of these interest rates once again so the market's moving up but as you can see, the US 500 is reacting a lot earlier than Bitcoin is reacting to the same exact news. So I believe that we could see a lagged reaction in Bitcoin, which could be proven by, uh, you know, if we do continue this inverse head and shoulders pattern right here. And also we are seeing a indicator right now, which is the relative strength index that is showing a divergence in the price action. So in my opinion right now, and you should definitely not listen to anybody on the Internet, but it could be a situation where we could see Bitcoin moving upwards for a little bit to catch up with the US 500, which was moving upwards for a little bit as well because of this news of potentially lowering down the pace at which rate hikes are happening. So I just wanted to tell you, be ready, you know, first of all, to see the US 500 start reversing from this area because over time we're still going to need more rate hikes. But also be ready to see Bitcoin potentially move up because it still has a lagged reaction to the news that we have heard from the Fed. So and also, you, have, you know, we had this FTX stuff. We have all of this stuff that influenced the market negatively. But this FTX stuff could have actually been just a liquidity grab, which means that we probably are going to be moving bullish in the coming months. So thanks for watching this quick video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is not financial advice by any means or anything you know i'm not a financial advisor you should do your own due diligence before investing into anything in the crypto blockchain or nft or anything world but i'm just speaking from intuition right now from my trading experience from uh you know the fact that i have seen liquidity grabs in the past and a liquidity grab looks something along the lines of this and we could see prices start moving up once again but uh let's not get ahead of ourselves let's see how the market reacts to the market open on monday let's see if we break this zone of support down here because if we do break it and close below it on the daily level we're probably still moving down but if we keep moving up and you know potentially on the lower time frames start creating a break of this area right here we could potentially keep moving towards more upside that's it for your satoshi video for today hope you guys enjoyed it drop a like subscribe to the channel follow all the socials down below check out the links if you want to learn something and i hope to see you all in the next video